biceps, triceps, hamstrings, gluteus maximus, I know about muscles. I've been taught. The first thing that I learned is that there's only one muscle that can't be taught. It can be trained, but it can't be improved. And, it isn't, and isn't that what muscle work is all about? Growth? Expansion? That's the one thing about muscles. They benefit from exercise. All except one. It is the one muscle that is trickling your life away. Oh, it's not the heart. Y'all think it's the heart, but it's not. The heart can learn things. The heart can grow. The bladder grows all right. It grows weaker. It doesn't even benefit from its own only exercise, whole getting it in. But oddly enough, it becomes less efficient the more prolonged and often you hold it in. I can't express the comfort this piece of information brings me. You know what it's like? It's like you're walking down the street and you think you're looking pretty sharp. And you even get a wink from the 7-Eleven girl checking you out and you're feeling pretty damn good. So anyway, you're feeling good, you're looking good. And then some guy walks past you and he's got these giant muscles and he makes you look like a worm. And when that guy walks past me and I start to turn into this worm, I just say in a red breath of course, hey, hey buddy, your arms may be the size of my thighs and your thighs may be the size of my waist, but that little muscle that controls your bladder is still the same size as mine. And when you gotta go buddy, <laughs> You gotta go. And when you step up to, the, uh, to that saw, buddy, we are equal. I keep having this dream. I know you must not like me much right now, but can I tell you about this dream I keep having? We have a little boy, Leah. It's just me and this little boy. You're not in it. And in my dream, it's just me and this little boy, and he's like a little Indian. So wild, I don't know where it comes from. And we're up in the mountains, hiking somewhere, I guess. And we see this bird. And the boy, William, can't get over this bird, can't take his eyes off it. And I want to find this bird so I can show everything to William. His markings, his mating habits. And when I find this bird, I look up to tell William, but he's but he's far away from me now. He's on the edge of the mountain, flopping his arms like a bird, and then, he, and then he jumps. I watch him jump, it's too quick to say anything. I sit there, but I'm not afraid, because I know I expect to see him any minute, flying above me. So I sit on this rock, waiting. And finally he flies up, just like I knew he would. William, flying so high in the sky. And he swoops on over me, he says, come on dad, jump, it's fun. So I go to the edge of the mountain. I stand there, I can see right down to the bottom. I know I'm not a bird, I feel so scared. And I look up, and he's gone. No Christ, no, I need you, I want you. William, please go back, please, I'll do anything, I'll jump, anything. I'll have my arms spread. Legs wide, one golden image, image of your father, I'll give you. Will you? Forgive me. Forgive me. What's up, Danny? Can I get an ET on that Grand Prix? The lady is driving me crazy in the waiting room. Keeps asking me for things, it, riders ready every five minutes. Uh, we're still waiting on parts. She needs what? that window switch replaced, that's why our windows aren't working. GMs are known for electrical issues. She needs a new tire on the left rear, too. That air bubble is dangerous. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Great. I can't wait to go tell her. She was so excited to pay for her windows since she came in for an, just an oil change. Well, this is why we have, we have you to get the work sold. Yeah. Well, you haven't met that lady. Well, let me go talk to her. Be right back, man. All right, good luck. Good luck. So you must be Chris. Yeah, and you're Danny, I take it? Yeah, yeah. Heard a lot about you, man. Yeah, <laughs> hope nothing too bad. <laughs> nah, nah, of course not. Unless there's something I should know. You're not a serial killer, are you? Danny, get in here. I got you taken care of. Just come finish the paperwork. All right, perfect, perfect. Hey, nice to meet you, boss. I gotta go, though. Well, our policy is that we can't file a police report until the missing person in, has been missing for at least 48 hours. She's not just missing, something has happened to her. All right, listen, listen, I understand your concern. And if, it, if she doesn't return before Thursday morning at, what was it, uh, 6.30 a.m., then just give us a call and we could file that missing person uh, report for you, all right? You're saying you won't do anything until Thursday morning. 
you won't even investigate. Bring the canine unit to search for a scent trail, nothing. How do you expect to find any clues to what happened to her if you wait two days to do anything? Uh, sir, sir, listen. Let me assure you that we can we know how to handle all these situations like this. Nine out of ten times the person turns up and hasn't given to tell their husband about um, her out of town business or going to visit some friends, something of that nature. I'm sure she's just fine. And if you don't hear from her, we'll look out for her. It's, time, uh, it's what we're here for. No. No. She wouldn't be out of town on a day when she has the final designs being approved and signed by one of her company's biggest clients. Sir, there isn't anything I can do until the 40 hours has been up. No, I have to get going, but if you don't hear back, just call us back. Alright, Marcus arrives at the Hartwell residence. Scene begins with Chris letting him in. You must be Marcus. I am. We sit at the kitchen table where it's evident Amber and Chris were having coffee. Amber prepares a cup for Marcus as he and Chris begin discussing Jennifer's disappearance. Amber has told me briefly about the situation. Tell me about Jennifer's circle of friends. The people she's encountered over the last week or so. Well, she's been really busy getting her designs together for a big pitch at work. She's mm -hmm. an architect. Mm -hmm. Amber can tell you more about the people she and Jennifer work with. As far as her personal life goes, it's just been me and Amber for the last couple of weeks. All right, okay. Do you guys have any have any uh, recently work on your house done? Any services, new providers, um, cable guy, pest control, babysitter maybe? No, I'm pretty handy, so I do most of the stuff around here. And we don't have any children, just a dog, as you know, two cats. Okay. Amber mentioned that your dog came back, and the dog had been with your wife, and I have her down as um. Jennifer Lois Hartwell? Yes, that's correct. Birthday, November 2nd, 1988. He was whining at the front door shortly after I got out of the shower. Okay. I can take her outside with me and then maybe we can go back to, she can take me back to the place where Jennifer and her might have split. Is she friendly? Yeah, yeah, he's a sweetheart. Probably would be better if I do it though, honestly. She might not act normal with a, normal with a stranger. Okay. But we don't know what we're dealing with here, so I feel a lot better if I, if I bugged you and listened in, and then if anything went wrong, I'd hear it just in case. Okay.